So we're still here at 365 Paragon Mills Road for the fire that started around 2.35 this afternoon. Uh, earlier we were reporting that we had five firefighters for, transported from this scene, one with injuries related to burns uh, from this fire and the others that were heat related, three civilians that were transported from this scene. We have had additional firefighters transported from this scene with heat related injuries. Uh, so now the total count for injuries related to firefighters is going to be seven that have been transported from this scene. Our response has been downgraded at this time. So we are back to a usual response in terms of the number of apparatus or pieces of equipment that are responding to the scene and the number of personnel that are on this scene right now. Uh, you were still seeing smoke uh, coming from this building, which is Building B uh, at Paragon Mills Road. And that's because crews were unable to access two units, uh, Unit 6 and Unit 2 of this building. Uh, there was still fire and smoke that were trapped within those units, and they were unable to get to those units. Uh, very shortly ago, they were able to get to at least one of those units, and they were able to go inside and actually clear that unit to be able to say that there were no occupants inside of that particular unit. Uh, right before this update, crews were working very hard to get inside that very last unit so that we could come back and report that that unit was clear. However, I was not able to get it in time, so I will be able to tweet out to let you know if that unit is clear. Uh, we're very hopeful to say that that unit will be clear. Uh, once we do that, then we will be able to confirm that there are in fact no fatalities, but just to be sure, tomorrow morning, the Office of Emergency Management is going to bring out their cadaver dogs, the cadaver canines, and run those units on this scene to confirm that there are indeed no fatalities that were inside of this building. Uh, so at this time, we believe that all persons are accounted for. Uh, we are still making efforts to triple check and go through the log that was provided to us by property management. The concern, however, is that it's the summertime. Lots of people have visiting relatives over during the summertime. So while we may be able to confirm that everybody that was on the log that is made, you know, paying rent or uh, on, the, on the actual log was accounted for, there may be additional visitors that are not going to be on the log that unless those persons that are on the log tell us they are accounted for, we just will not know. So we have to be able to make sure that we're getting in contact with everybody to triple check and make sure that everyone is indeed accounted for. Uh, so our response here has downgraded. We have indeed returned lots of units back to service. Uh, those personnel that are being returned to service will get an opportunity to decompress when they go back to the hall in order to rehab and guess what? Respond to the next call for service because that's what we're sworn to do and that's what we signed up to do. Um, and so that's exactly what they're doing right now as they return to service. They're going to their halls, they're showering, they're getting all of the carcinogens off of themselves, and they're preparing for their next emergency call. Uh, in terms of recovery efforts for those that will be displaced, Building B contained 20 units. We don't have an exact number of how many folks uh, resided in that building. However, there is a temporary shelter that has already been stood up for the residents that will be displaced from Building B. The Office of Emergency Management in conjunction with the Red Cross and uh, MNPS and WEGO have, have come together to form this temporary shelter. It's already open. Residents here are being instructed to go to Croft Middle Design School at 482 Elysian Field Road. It's one mile from this location. So they don't have very far to go. If they're unable to get there, if they're unable to have a car or transportation, WEGO has provided a bus, which is on scene here, to transport them from this location to Croft Middle Design School. That location is already set up with beds, with snacks, with gym. It has showers. They're already setting up for these residents to be able to stay there tonight. The Red Cross is there as well, and they will be providing long-term information for the residents. There are also interpreters there that will be able to help with the residents because this community is a large community of Spanish speaking residents. So we're already prepared for that. So the Office of Emergency Management has already had this set up for those people. So there is a um, community or a clubhouse here 
on site. And if the residents go to the clubhouse, Red House, Red Cross has representatives there, but they will instruct them to go to Croft Middle Design School. And that's where this shelter is set up for those residents who may be displaced today. Absolutely. Um, I use the analogy often of walking into a box. Uh, this is a box that they've never been in before. This box is already hot. It's hot outside anyways, but you're walking into a box. You're spraying water on a fire, which creates steam. Steam is hot. Uh, so you're already amping up how hot it is, but then you have your body temperature and you have the gear that the firefighters have to wear in order to protect themselves. And then you're adding the steam element. So these conditions, these working conditions for the firefighters are not ideal at all. And then you have a structure that becomes unsound in a matter of seconds. And you have someone in your ear or on your radio that's telling you, get out. But in the back of your mind, because you're a fire, firefighter, you are sworn to help somebody. And on that radio call, it's told you someone is possibly trapped. And so you're making a decision about, am I going to continue to try to search for someone who may or may not be inside, but I know that this building, this roof or the floor could give way at any point in time. And those are the split, decision to sex, uh, split decisions uh, that we have to make every single day, that our firefighters make every single time they go on a fire call. And that's something that happened here today. And so they were able to get out of that situation because the roof did collapse while we had personnel inside searching for someone that was said to may be inside trapped in a building. Luckily, all of our firefighters got out. And at this point, we do not believe that anyone was trapped inside, uh, but we are going to confirm that. So those are the situations they're faced with. And we're so proud of their courageous actions that they do put themselves on the line every day for strangers, but they make those decisions. And luckily today, no one got hurt. And we're very proud of that. The residents, I believe, were unrelated to any burns. One of them, I know, was stressed to the heart. Uh, I'm not sure how you would be feeling if you were watching your building burn down. Uh, I'm sure I would have an impact on emotionally even how I was feeling, but I can't confirm the injuries to the civilians. Uh, I do not think that they were related to burns, uh, but they, they were unrelated to heat as well, as far as I know. I have not had anyone mention any pets, but usually if pets were still inside, we would be hearing screams and moans out here and people would be telling us my pet is inside. We have not encountered that while we are here. So I, I'm confident that there are no pets inside, uh, but I'm sure that if there are, then we'll, we'll hear about it soon. Thank you guys so much.